sinasabi ko sa'yo Na wala akong naramdamin Kung ikaw ay lumayo At hindi na ako mahalin Sa pagtulog na luha Ako ngayon Ang medusa Nangisip mo'y hindi Hindi na tayo magpamakalang Kaalam na hanggang mo'y Kasi ang pinaraw dito sa langsan Hanggang sa kamatayan Pag-ibig ko'y walang hanggang Kung ako ang siyang masusunod Ingin ko ang pangakubo Na hindi ka iibig mo sa sinasabi namin, sisihin niyo po si Ginoong Bani Biernas. And uh, do not blame us if our English spoken in dollar is cannabow. Yes. Okay, yeah. like, you know, our idol, uh, Mr. President, is uh, Joseph M. Uh, Sito Estrada. Yeah, we were, we're going to be proud of the cannabow English. Because, uh, because uh, tomorrow, I will invite you to eat my house. Huh? I'm going to eat my house. Huh? Okay. We, yesterday, the wife killed one carabao yeah, and did, one pig. Did you just see how uh, I see? You know what I see? I see. Yeah. <laughs> she just passed away. Gagalit sa iyo. Hello po. Why, pinabati natin na chairperson of the history department, ha? Ang ating pong IC, ang ating very... Uh, uh, <laughs> We just had a very, very uh, successful lecture uh, uh, na ginawa po ng ating guest ngayon uh, kanina. No? Now, uh, before, gusto ko ano, no? ganda yung ating music kanina. I'm Jesse. Oh, Mahal ka namin. Ano? Uh, idol. Nalam mo? Idol namin yan parehas. Recently lang natin nalaman mm-hmm. na idol pa ka namin pareho si RJ Jacinto. Mm-hmm. Eh kaya gusto, minsan nga gusto alam mo ba, alam natin, mo yung bakit ko siya bakit idol? Bakit ko siya idol? Yung, yung seryosong dahilan, kaya ako idol si RJ Jacinto. Kasi? Kasi, magaling talaga musikero. Magaling? Siya, magaling? Writer, guitarist. Alam mo, ano talaga siya eh. Hindi naman ako nag-gitara, pero a lot of people who play the guitar and play the guitar well, hmm. say, na isa sa pinakamagaling na... Gitarista ng bansa natin. Gitarista ng bansa si Arte. Uh-huh. 
Diba? Actually, napap- mapapanood siya mamaya dun sa ano niya, RJ Bar. Every Friday yan eh, RJ and the Riots. And by the way, ako tuwang-tuwa nung kinakanta ko yung muli. Kasi actually, hindi nyo alam, muntik na akong maging ito yung last episode ng Dolo Tide Live eh. Huwag na. Kasi nagtampo eh. Kaya nagtampo eh. Hindi. Tapos yung kalokohang reason kung bakit paborito ko si RJ. Bakit si RJ? Si RJ. Ayok ka, RJ. Slang na slang, twang na twang. Hindi na iibig mo'y. Yes. Sinasabi ko sa'yo na wala akong naramdaman. And part of the reason why we chose that song is because It's of because, what's going to happen to us today. Because what's going to happen today. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is a premonition of things to come <laughs> that we will just uh, uh, utilize. Yes, yes. Twang, Twang. and slang. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you freak. <laughs> to uh, yeah. get away with this uh, episode. This episode. Mm-hmm. No, but I think it's hugely important to also get another perspective. Uh-huh. And also, because most of our uh, uh, most of our audience are actually overseas Filipino workers mm-hmm. and OFWs, they're very good in English. That's okay. why we're going to test this today. No, okay. and, not, and not just that. And not just that. Um, oh, as we already announced to you, we're going to have a special guest today. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the The show, The Lotar History Live, is taking advantage yeah. of uh, the presence yes. of our esteemed colleague. Could we be calling him colleague? Because, is, yeah, because he's, uh, uh, he's a historian. He's a historian. A real and, one. Yes. A real historian. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, the presence of a distinguished colleague who happens to be from Thailand. Yes. You know, uh, and who is in town for a very, very short period of time. Yes. No? And the De La Salle University is hosting him. Yes. And yes. we were privileged enough to uh, have him deliver a lecture a few a couple few of hours yes. uh, a couple of hours ago mm-hmm. uh, on uh, yes, yeah, localized frontiers of the Spanish Empire, diplomacy, religious missions, commerce, and cultural exchanges between Manila and the Kingdom of Siam. This covers the Spanish almost the whole span, no, the uh, first part of the Spanish period in the Philippines from 1521 to 1767. And, 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 and it was a very well attended. Well attended, uh, well wow. Attended. Uh, I think even in the Facebook post, a lot of interest was generated because there were a lot of people in the Philippines who were actually interested with the history of Thailand. And very little, actually very little is known about Philippine and the uh, A Siam relation. Yeah, this before, is before the uh, modern period. Uh, yes. Before the modern period, and as Dr. Las Obaldo mentioned earlier, after the pre-colonial period, no, after yes, yes. The, after prehistory, because uh, there's a lot of uh, information out there for the for the Austronesian period. Austronesian where period. we are part of that. The, uh, anthropological, yes, linguistic, yes. and other info, other materials, other kinakapos uh, uh, na ako sa English. <laughs> <laughs> you told me, you know, you told me that you have a tip for me when we are speaking in English, that you have to think in English. So you're not thinking yeah, in thinking English in now. English. Okay, okay. Start thinking in English. Start thinking in English. Yes. <laughs> no, but uh, there is a huge gap <laughs> somewhere in the middle, no? somewhere in the middle, and, and Dr. Lasso pointed this yeah. out because there's a wealth of information for the prehistory. A connection with Thailand as Austronesian peoples. As well as the, today. Post, the post-independent yes. period or the modern period. Yes, no? yes, there's yes. A, there's a dearth of information about the colonial period, especially the Spanish colonial period. Right, right, no? right. So that's the reason why uh, the presence of our guest yeah, was yeah. extremely oh, appreciated yes, yes, by, by scholars from this university as well as students. Wow. No? Yeah. Wow, wow. Right. So, um, and yeah. even more important is the fact that he agreed, no? He, he agreed, agreed. He agreed. He agreed to join us. Today. Today, after his lecture, after his lecture to join us in here. our anniversary special. Oh, oh. Like there's, there's, 
it's it's the, this is the only time we're going to have a first anniversary oh. because our our la, our first broadcast was July 5 July 5 of 2017 oh. so o, although we have a one month anniversary um, special this is our real anniversary in in as we said mm -hmm. this today today's episode is even made more special because of the presence of our esteem. Yeah, yeah. so I'm going it to introduce. introduce uh, while shall introduce it, I I need to go to the toilet because because of the excitement. I, I need <laughs> to go to the. Uh, to so the anyway, home. yeah, our our uh, our scholar who's the guest today um, received his doctorate from the Universidad Autonoma. Uh, Autonoma is that is that right? Autonoma de Madrid, uh, or the is it the Autonomous University of Madrid? Um, he is lecturer of Hispanic and Latin American Studies at the Department of History at Tamasat University in Bangkok, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? So, uh, here we'd like to welcome as guest for the Lothar History Live, and I hope I say the name almost correctly, Dr. Yen Sak Ong Jam Rasik. Come, uh, sir. Thank you. Uh, you can sit in the middle. Yes. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you. One will join us later. We just need to pee. But basically, um, the first question that comes to mind is: first of all, why did you become a historian? I mean, you know, you're good looking, you're young. Thank you so why much. did you become a historian? No, I think it's something innate. You don't know what would you like to do, but it's something uh -huh. that. It's like it's supernatural. Is there something that happened to you when you were a kid? Is there something that? Uh, that uh, triggered your interest in studying the past? I think that is because I had nothing to do, so I went to the library of the ah. school and then I browse something and find some interesting history books. Uh, so, before studying Philippine history, what kind of history did you become interested with? Oh, that must be Thai. Thai that history. Must be Thai. And then I began to be interested in the Spanish language. Ah, why? Why? What? 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 What uh, triggered that interest in the Spanish language? You know, it's very a uh, kind of nonsense reason. But one day when I was in the secondary school, uh -huh. I listened a song, a Spanish song, oh. way back home. Do you? Macarena. No, 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 Macarena. Macarena is too famous. It's for. Uh, I find out it was from Gloria. Uh, it's the fan. Ah, yes. wow, wow. And the Miami sound machine. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was his, that was her band. That was her band. And, and the, the Miami, Miami Sound Machine. Sound machine. Oh, That's interesting. Yeah. I never learned that because you know Vanny Biernas was no, from that time. No, 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 no. From no. that time. No, no, no. I just read about it in. Uh, Why? Because in you're, you're a freaking books. millennial. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm celebrating this month. I'm celebrating yes. my twenty-second birthday. Oh, that's a lie. You know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, yeah. 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 anyway, 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 anyway. Ah. Uh, the question is, so you became interested with the Spanish language, yes. um, and then how did you begin? You you, you went to college, you're already interested. That was already your field already at the time. Yeah. At that time, Spanish was not taught in the oh. secondary school. Uh -huh. So the only one thing you can do is enter university. But in uh, the university, there they, is they teach they teach Spanish. Spanish, the major of Spanish. Uh, so, uh, yeah. so you 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 were you a history major, or a Spanish major, no, Spanish major. You were a Spanish major. Yes. Okay, so that's that's your that's your bachelor. Yeah, you know, you know my, my, my mother. Yeah. My mother is also a Spanish major. Uh, uh, really? Yeah. 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 So she yeah. Finished, she graduated in nineteen sixty seven, but she was a Spanish major. Unfortunately for her, she did not really put <laughs> her Spanish uh, education to good use. But after now she. She still speaks good Spanish. You know, there's a guy whom I actually know who's very good in Spanish. He's a researcher and a historian from Ateneo. His name is Hobie C. Uh, and Hobie C wanted to go to your talk, but he wasn't able to attend. Oh. And now he's so happy to watch you. Thank you so much. So, hello, Hobie. Yeah. Hello. Nicholas Chow C is a very good friend of mine. Oh. So, um, so now that you are, that, that you, you work as a Spanish, now what's your master's degree? 
yeah, what 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 was the what was the what was the degree? Is the it degree history? Is, is history. Is ah, history. so you 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 took history already. Yes. But what was your do- thesis at that time? The thesis at time was about the relationship between Siam, my country, and the Philippines, the oh. India pre modern ah. era, 16th to 18th centuries. Oh, 16th to 18th century. Yes. Wow. Just which is which is really the substance of your uh, talk earlier. Talk earlier, yes. right? Yes. Now, so you took then you took your doctorate in Madrid. Yes. What you and, and then of course the the IC told me you know the doctorino Orillo Orillo Juan you know told me that uh, you you wrote your dissertation in lengua española. In lengua española. Yes. Yeah, claro. sí. claro. So what what was the topic of that? It's just the same. The name is just the same as my master degrees. Ah, so but you trans- is a, was that the translation or you added things to it? No, because you you now have a, a access to the archives. Yes, because actually the master degrees in Spain they require you to read um write just sixty pages, which is not okay. enough for me ah, to understand ah, the yeah. past of my country. So yeah. I have to continue in the doctorate degree. See, fantastic. Or for the benefit uh, of our yeah. viewers, yeah, the master's degree here in the Philippines. It's a lot harder than the master's degree in other, other countries. countries. Yeah. When I took my master's in South Korea, it's like 70 pages also. 70 pages? You know my master's degree was 500 pages. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's already, you know, so much yes. actually. They, they wanted me to trim it to 250, but I cannot. Yes. But yeah, even the 250 is hard yes. already. Yes. So, you know, so, and, and I, how, 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 but, but in a way, it's good because you're in another country yes. and you're exposed to the culture. Now, people are interested because I want also to people to realize that, you know, studying history and studying it in another language that is not your own, what kind of struggles yeah. did you experience? Challenges. No? Yeah. Challenges. Challenges. Yeah. First of all, the language barrier. I think it's the first one. But anyway, for me, this barrier makes me, it's a challenge, but it's interest uh-huh. at the same time. Uh-huh. So, you know, you have to do this challenge but you know, you have to pass it. So that, that, definitely. Mm-hmm. So you do it with passion. Yeah. So you do it with passion. Now, yeah. for example, when you were staying in Spain, uh, what were the archives that you went to to see the oh, documents? So for example, yes. we are talking about the, there are documents about Siam and the connection of Siam and the Philippines. Philippines. Where did you find these documents? And what kind of documents? In, and very briefly, oh, did, you talk, did, you, did you check? Actually, I, have, I must confess that the archive of, of Spain are excellent. They excellent, know, yeah. excellent, excellent. Mm-hmm. But mostly, I work in Seville, Sevilla, oh. in Sevilla. the south of Spain, yeah. uh-huh. which is where uh-huh. all the documents about America and Philippines are kept mostly. Is it the the archivo in the in the Yes, 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 yes. Which, of course, I w- I only dream to <laughs> them, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and mostly they are documents. Maps. What kind? So old maps, maps, and then what? Diplomatic dispatches, or were there you know a letters of governor generals or letters yeah, of, of, of things? The of, law, of, of officers, laws. The letters from the officials, officers back to Mexico. And in Mexico, they send them back to. Yeah, Mexico. because we have to remind our viewers that uh, <laughs> during that time, Manila was not ruled directly from Spain because we were under what we call the Virreinato. The Nueva España of the Vice Royalty of New Absolutely, Spain, yes. which is which was stationed in, in Mexico. Mexico. That's why you have the Galleon trade, which is which 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 of course tried for two hundred years as the monopoly, a uh, monopoly economy of the Philippines. You have the route from Manila to Acapulco, and then from Acapulco to other parts of South America and Sevilla, uh, Spain, which became the longest trade route ever in the history of yes. the world. Now, if you're going to look at it, you will see that um, what would that Siamese, for example, now the Thai people, what's their business? What, what, what were they doing here? So maybe we can go to that topic already, Mr. Viernes, right? Do you have other questions about him? Okay. Yeah, about it. So do you have, uh, what's, what's so interesting? What's, what's the story? Why were the Siamese interested with uh, dealing with the Spanish government here? Okay, I mean, the actually what Siam prayed for mm-hmm. is the westernization of the oh. archipelago. So Siam needs plata, silver, silver. from Mexican, yeah. from Mexico. Oh, yeah. So 
this archipelago is the only one, the only geographical place that can provide the king of Siam with this kind of thing. Look, even, even before, who's that guy, Mongkut? Oh, Ramada, Fort, Ramada Fort, yeah. Mongkut, because you know, we, of course, this is not historical, but we watch the king and I, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and you'll bring her. Yeah, you'll bring her, you know. The worker. Uh, yeah. I'm king, you two will be king, and you two will know everything. <laughs> yeah. but one of my favorite films. Yeah. Now, um, of course, we, we know that King Mongkut wanted to have a Western education for the future uh, king, uh, who would be Chula Longkorn, uh, Rama the fifth. Uh, that's why uh, they got Anna Leonowens as the tutor of the English tutor of, of the future king. So, uh, but even before the king and I, even before Mongkut, Rama the fifth, uh, Rama the fourth, the the emperors, uh, the, the kings before uh, in the 1600s, 1500s, they are already um, thinking of Westernization. Yes, because the presence of the Portuguese, Portuguese, uh, yes, Thai, um, Thai monarchs imported many luxurious things from Europe, oh. from the Portuguese, and then in the 17th century, we import many, you know, Louis XII, it's Louis XIV, yes. uh -huh. the uh -huh. Sun King. Sun King, yes, of France. Yes, always. Yeah. So you can imagine the chandelier in some of the palaces wow. in Australia as well. These are examples. Yeah. They want to Anyway, so, uh, no, so they they wanted because you know uh, the Spaniards. There is a adage that the of, of some of the historians that the frailes, yes. uh, the, the Spaniards brought in the Philippines plata y frailes, yes, or yes. silver and friars. Yes. So what you're interested in is having silver. So. Um, also, we have to also contextualize that in the Southeast Asia, yeah. in the whole of Southeast Asia, it's only the Thai people or the Siamese people that were not colonized oh. by the Europeans. By Europeans. Yeah. So, tell me, what were the things that... Uh, so, how did the Siamese uh, kingdom at that time connect? What were the first connections of the Spaniards and the, and, and the, and the Thai government at the time? You mean during the, the, the Siamese? Yeah, the very first ones. This 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 uh, uh, period, 1521 to 1767. You mean from the part of the Siam? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the the Spaniards from the Philippines they get involved in the politic, internal politic of Cambodia. Mm. At that time, in 1590 something, mm. the king of Siam had war with the king of Cambodia, mm. and the governor of Siam of, of the Philippines they support he supported. King of Cambodia. Ooh. So that's when Philippines, Siam, and Cambodia, we got in a triangle conflict. And then the king became, the king destroyed the capital of, of Cambodia, mm -hmm. and then they took captives. And among all the captives, there were Spaniards from Manila mm -hmm. and some Portuguese. So the king, what did he do was, he sent the uh, Portuguese called Diogo Belloso as uh -huh. an ambassador. To establish relationship with Manila, the colonial government. Yes. yes, that from that part they do the the first friendship and trade treaty, ah. fifteen ninety eight. Do, do we know? Do we know why uh, the Spanish government here in the Philippines uh, were leaning towards a favorable alliance, if we can call it that, yeah, with 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 Cambodia? Yeah. What was what was the what was the Spanish interest in yeah. in siding with yeah. uh, with the Cambodian king? Yes, because firstly, because I have to contextualize first because yeah. yes. please, that, please uh, do. during the second half of 15th, uh, 16th century, there was a group of Portuguese and Spanish in the royal court of Cambodia. Oh. So these are the entourage or circles of people that influenced mm. the thought of the kingdom, the king of Cambodia. So after the, the influence that one, the king of Cambodia, the king Sata at that time, he decided to establish relationship with Philippines first before Siam. And then that's where the... You, you mentioned earlier because I attended your, yeah, your lecture. lecture. You were so happy. You, yeah, were, you were so lucky. And, and uh, Professor Chua wasn't around. Yeah. But you mentioned uh, 
that uh, uh, there was there was in a way a shifting of, uh, for lack of a better term, regional hegemony in continental Southeast Asia oh, yes. from from uh, Cambodia, yes. uh, from the Khmers, Khmers. Uh, from the Khmers to the from, to the Siamese okay. of. Uh, of uh, Ayut Ayutaya. 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 Just, right. just to contact regional hegemony, meaning at that time the Khmers of Cambodia were the ones who were like very powerful yes. in that area, oh. which is in about uh, Indochina, right? No, no, no. Yes. Not, well, that, that, that is actually my question. You know? mm. uh, was this period the time when Cambodia was still the dominant mm. power oh, yeah. in in the region, <coughs> oh. or was the power of the Cambodians already waning, declining, and the power of the yes. of the Thais, the Siamese, uh, rising, or when the Cambodians already already uh, re mm -hmm. really um, yes. shall we say collapsed? No, no, not collapsed. Um, but but anyway, declined, fully declined, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. fully declined in the in the. And the Siamese power was already in its in its yes. apex. Can you can you at least yes. provide for us the, the context? context yes. Okay. As you know, the we all know that Angkor Wat, right? Yes. Angkor Wat is the, the Angkor Wat is that the butter that we eat with the bread? Uh, <laughs> Angkor Wat is one of those stupid uh, comments. <laughs> stupid comments. Yeah. Okay, Angkor Wat. Oh, yeah, so the the the, 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 the imperial complex. Yeah. This is the age of splendor of the Khmer kings, yeah. which already ends in 13th or 14th centuries already. Ah, oh, but we're yeah. talking about 16th century, which is considered a dark age of the, yes. the Khmer. Of the Khmer. Yeah. Yes, oh. because the capital in Siem Reap was already moved yes. to another, another city. Yes. And at that time, 16th century, the real power was the king of Pegu. We go in, in Burma. In Burma. Oh. So, yes, even the king of Siam was subjugated between 1569 to 93. Uh, 24 oh, years. By, by the king of Pegu. By the king of Pegu. Because, be, because mm. the, the king of Ayudaya was in the 1300s, right? Uh, the rise of that kingdom was in yes, the 1300s. 1351. 1351. Yeah, 1351. Yeah. Wow, I'm learning because I did not have Southeast Asian history when I was in college. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, so okay, for, for our uh, viewers to follow, yeah. let us contextualize. We're essentially talking about the 16th century, 16th century right? Yes. 16th century. Uh, Cambodian power is already finished. No? Oh, yeah, Cambodian yeah. power is finished. Uh, Thai power is a lot better than Cambodian power, okay. but is also subordinate to the to the, to the Pegu, Pegu, the king yeah. of Pegu, uh, yeah. in in Burma. Pegu. No, but. Uh, is what were, were the Spaniards in the Philippines aware of this regional power setup, or were they? Th does, does it they reflect in the documents yes, that they are aware? Definitely. They oh wow! I find I found many documents from the late 16th century um, writing that the king of Siam was uh, enemy of the Christianity, Ooh. and we have to help the king of Pegu and the king of Cambodia, oh. which are less powerful. Uh, That's what the Spaniards at that time perceived. Which is huh? which is incorrect, right? Because the the king, uh, according to you, the kingdom of oh, Pegu was more powerful. I than mean, um, in the first half, up, first up, half. up until the seventies of the mm. century, the Pegu was still powerful. Up at but after the change of the king, the uh, decline of Pegu a little uh, bit. Yeah, it's that is Pegu. Stop it, stop it, stop it. I'm trying to do another, another, another lame joke. joke. No, another another lame joke. Another lame no, joke. no, it's Pegu. Uh, uh, the inspiration for the bar near St. Peter's in Quezon Avenue. The Pegusus. Pegusus. <laughs> another lame joke. I, you see, we've been doing this show for a year now. And, has and I know <laughs> when a lame joke is <laughs> coming. So I let you know, I let you know that, the, that a lame joke Yeah, but you cannot coming. stop me, Mr. Rivier Nash. You cannot stop oh, me. Okay, anyway, okay. let's, 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 yeah, let's, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's reform us. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, the Spanish government, mm -hmm. no, which has its interest in spreading Christianity uh -huh. as the preliminary uh, entry point 
to uh, colonialism, right? Uh, supported both Pegu and, uh, and, and Cambodia, Cambodia against against Siam. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the that was the situation. And the other one is that you know the conquest, the spirit of conquest. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That they think that in order to get into China, yeah. apart from going directly to right. Guangdong or something, right. they think that Siam could be their base. Oh. But that's ah. the from the south to China. So, of the Spaniards, they're not interested in acquiring Siam. As uh, did they ever become interested in acquiring? Siam or, or invading Siam to become one of their colonies? Yes, sure. Ah, they, but, they were? But not all the Spanish um, officials agree with this plan. Uh -huh. so there are factions Perfect. in the in Manila. In yeah, the because uh, again, just to contextualize things, the Philippines, uh, the Philippines was very important to the Spaniards, not just as a actually not for the sake not, of the Philippines. Yeah, not for the sake of the Philippines. But or the Philippines as a base of operation to yeah. uh, as, as a springboard to, to enter, to the enter other parts of other parts South of Asia, Asia, including China, China and the spices, the spice uh, area, yes, uh, the spice islands area. Mm -hmm. So actually, you're saying that that even yung, yung the, the, the perception that the Spaniards uh, were, uh, were actually, they, they had a full hand with our resources, you're saying that that's not really uh, true. That, you know, the, 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 I mean, the, the natural resources and all, was, they're getting no, no, them no, from South no, America. No, no, they're not interested in our natural yes, resources. They yes. were, they're interested in spreading uh, the Spanish, Spanish Empire, Spanish Empire right? yeah. uh, to, to Asia. Uh, uh, and, and that's the reason why, according to you, that's the reason why mm. they meddled in the in the conflict the between between Cambodia and uh, and Siam. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, as it turns out, as it turns out, mm. they uh, did not properly uh, properly gauge, for lack of a better term, they did not properly gauge the true strength of uh, of both Siam and Cambodia because they sided with the with the weaker <laughs> with the weaker force. Right? It's not all, not all government generals agree with to bow themselves with the king of Cambodia. Cambodia. Yeah. Some like Luis Pérez das Marinas. Das Marinas, yeah. yeah. example. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Dos Marinas was was not in favor, no? Uh, was in favor of I was in favor, sorry, was in favor, favor of banking Cambodia, Cambodia and restoring the, the Cambodian dynasty. Yes. But then is it Dos Marinas who also had a relationship, a diplomatic relationship with the uh, No, Bustamante. Like okay, later on, yeah. Uh, yeah, Bustamante. And Dos Marinas is earlier, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yes. Yeah, so, so uh, so what you're saying to us is that there were governors in the Philippines who were in favor of uh, interfering in the regional affairs ah. in, in continental yeah. Southeast Asia. Yes. But were there also governors who said, uh, no, we shouldn't really meddle with this? Actually, 99% of the governor generals didn't agree to invade Siam because uh. the first plan is from America to Sh to Philippines and in China, yes. or Malukas, not uh, Thailand, right, right, Siam yeah, at that time. Yes. So, but as Marina, um, Luis Perez as Marina was an exceptional case because he thinks that we can go beyond. So, they think to go beyond what is the conquest of Siam and another kingdom, Champa, which is in yes, Vietnam, oh, right, now. Vietnam right? right now. He was the one. The so, quite kingdom, ambitious, one. quite ambitious. Yes, just the word. Yeah. He's the only governor general. Okay. Did they? Did they? Did this plan? They really try to um, ma uh, materialize it? Did they? Did it? Did it come to fruition, or they were stopped by whatever they, reason? Finally, they were stopped because the king of Spain, Philip II, and Philip the Third, didn't agree with that. Because ah, at that time, yeah. Spain was in Europe was having problems with yes. Oh yes, yes. The Dutch Republic, Great uh, England. And that yeah, they, you know that at that time they were defeated. By be. the British, uh, yes. you know the fall of the Spanish yes. Armada. Yeah, you know that's uh, uh, you know when you watch Elizabeth, you know, the Virgin Queen. Yes. Right? The second one, the second, the first. The, one. the, the first one the was first just young queen. Yeah. The, the, the second one. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So, the, uh, yeah. so uh, this is where you see that, despite the fact, you know, remember that Spain 
um, well, I have to contextualize this, that Spain, when it was um, 700 years of colonialism from the Muslims, they were invaded by the Muslims, yes. and then by by late 1400s, yes. they were trying to rebuild again and, and unite as Spain, but they did not have much uh, uh, resources. That's why they needed to to colonize. But the the, the in a way the the, the weakness of Spain um, was shown by the time that Philip II was was trying to become a world power, even if they did not really have the capacity to do it. Actually, he didn't define himself just as world power; it's the universal power. <laughs> universal, universal power. power yes. yes, I like that. Love you, Philip. Yeah, Philip. <laughs> you know that guy, Philip. That's when we, when we have named it. Philip yeah. Pitts, right? Yeah. So, so, but yeah, he's a very Catholic king, though. No? Yes. And he, he, I think he wanted to marry Elizabeth, right? Oh, Mary. Mary. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. that's why. That's but he was busted. But, that's why they had. No <laughs> <laughs> but he was married to the half sister of Elizabeth. Yeah, the, yeah. The Bloody Mary one. Oh, yeah, the yeah. blood. Yeah, the Bloody Mary one. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So no, no. So so mm. I'm 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 more interested because it's a, it's a fascinating story. And I'm sure our audience is also fascinated. Yeah, especially you are interested with economic history, not just in the modern times, but no, even but at the, that but time. But more than more than economic, this one is international relations. Yeah. Right? yeah. So it's like this, a uh, yeah, yeah. But but <laughs> but the thing is, the thing is. Um, I, I'm sure our audience is now uh, uh, is now thinking there was there was a time in Philippine history mm. that we were thinking globally, no? Well, because right now, right now, uh, most of the strategic thinking done by the Philippines is just is just locally, you know, uh, address local issues, solve domestic problems, but. Here we are, during the early parts of Spanish colonial rule, the governors were thinking regionally, no? Yes, they were regionally. thinking far beyond the borders of the Philippines. Yes. Do we have an insight why the governors had that kind of mentality that they were not simply confined to domestic uh, prob because there were lots of domestic problems. There were problems with the Muslims in, in Mindanao and, and Sulu. You had problems with uh, those who are still not converted in the hinterlands of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. no? So there were, there, and of course there were uh, rebellions no? but, uh, undertaken by disgruntled Filipino uh, Filipinos. So, uh, can you at least provide us, if it's possible, provide us with a plausible reason why uh, many governors, Spanish governors, had this very ambitious uh, mindset, very regional mindset? Mm. So I think the, the important factor is because every governor had traveled half the world, mm. from Spain, Mexico, and then Philippines. I don't yes, think he yes. would my end at all going to other places ah, because yeah, it's yeah. half the world firstly right. and the second is, is I think is the factor of economy Philippines since its discovery and its settlement is 1565 yeah even Le Caspi he complains about where yeah. are the resources yeah exactly to survive yeah. so everything was motivated by economic factors that's true that's 300 true. years economic factors even I think that 99% I can say. Yeah, because of Spain, yeah. in Spain they, there is a drought in the central table land of Spain. Yeah. That's why they, it was, the, it, the, Spain itself is not economically viable as a country. There, there are less natural resources than, than, than you should. But Spain wanted to become a power, a superpower at the time. So that's why the colonization of, for example, Americas yeah. actually gave them a lot of those products that they can now sell to, to Europe for gold. And in the Philippines, they did not find too much. That's why, I mean, of course, we always think that the Spaniards came here. That's the narrative of some of our history books, that they came here because they wanted the gold, but they exploited our resources. Yeah. But, but that was not true. That was, that was yeah. not what happened here. <laughs> but I think the, 
beyond the goal of something materialistic. I think mm -hmm. that what Philippines provided to the empire was yeah. logistic factor. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. You are the I'm listening. Yeah, you are access to the Chinese Empire, Moluccas and everything. Something that if you know um, many European nations in the seventeenth century they established the East India Company. Yes, yes, yes. Which the Spanish Empire didn't need. Yes. Because they have Philippines as a very big interpol. Correct, correct, yeah. correct, correct. Yes. So okay. uh, yeah. Yeah, but, but for the most part for the most part, people say that the that the administration of the Philippines uh -huh. was done not just by the by the military or the or the civilian government, yes. but also in partnership with the church, yes. right? So, yes. uh, can you tell us if if the the Catholic Church in the country, uh, the Spanish priests mm -hmm. were also on board with with the decision of the governors to uh, expand into into in Southeast Siam, Asia, yeah. Siam yeah. Cambodia. Even oh. Burma, you said, right? Were they yeah. were they enthusiastic? Uh, enthusiastic? Were they they were saying if they were or they did not mind? Oh, they did. You or said were they, they were they cautious? Enthusiastic. 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 Um, you know, studying Philippine history, we have two kinds of conquest. Okay. Spiritual conquest. Definitely. Yes, and territorial conquest. All right. So we are talking about the religious orders that came with like since um, Magellan's and then Lake Asby. So the first group were Augustinians right, in 1965. Right. Yes. So, according to my study, uh, the first religious group were or Augustinian, but the first group of the religious order that entered Siam was uh -huh. Franciscan. Franciscan. Ah, Franciscan. So they went to Siam. They went to Siam, Augustinian as well, but afterwards. But what and happened? They, they they were not yeah. met by opposition by the Siamese kids. This, this is the one I forgot to tell. To, to speak in the in the conference because but they will not hear it. Yeah, you are special yes, because you're special. because <laughs> this wasn't say, mentioned. This was not earlier. mentioned no. uh, yes, because to contextualize the history, you know that the world was parted in two, right? Right, yeah, right. For example, in the east side for the Portuguese, yes. Madrugado, and the left side yeah. the Portuguese. Of, of the sea, yes. that, yes. that one. That's what yes. I is that is that Ellen's. Uh, uh -huh. Sorry. <laughs> Enough with the lame <laughs> jokes. Enough with the lame jokes. Sorry. Okay, yeah. So, oh, of yes. 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 so actually, Philippines should fall in with the Portuguese, the Portuguese side. Yes. What happened here is that there was a collaboration, an expected collaboration between the Spaniards, even um, civil part and the religious part. Augustinian and Franciscan were very well welcomed in the Siamese land by the Portuguese oh. religious orders. This is something that oh. from these activities we know that the line of Colosseas was totally blur blurred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally erased. Right. And eventually they finalized that the Philippines belong to the Spanish side. <laughs> yes, they do. Very, very thin okay, so, uh, so distinction there. Did I understand it correctly? Okay. Uh, for the benefit of our uh, the people watching us. Okay, so uh, Spain and Portugal mm were competing powers, yes. you know, global powers. Global power. okay. So, in order not to fight with each other or uh, be rivals with one another, mm. uh, Pope Alexander, Alexander VI, VI, Alejandro VI, uh, yeah. facilitated an agreement between the King of Spain and the King of Portugal to divide the world into two, right? Well, it, at first he, he issued a papal bull which is called Interchete. I, I want to demonstrate my Latin. Oh, Interchetera. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So there was, the, there was an agreement to divide. Yeah. Right? Yes. Now the Philippines falls under the Portuguese, the Portuguese sphere. Right. right. Because it's in the east. In the east. Which yeah. is why early part of uh, Spanish colonization of the Philippines, they were having problems with the Portuguese because yes. the Portuguese didn't want the Spaniards here in the Philippines because that violated the, the treaty. In right? fact, they were coming here, some of them, the Portuguese. Mm -hmm. But they were attacking the Spaniards yes. Yes, oh. as well. Yes, but okay. But what you're saying to us is that when the, when the Spanish uh, sent missionaries, Augustinians and uh, Franciscans, Franciscans. Said, when, when the Spanish government sent uh, Spanish priests to Siam, the Portuguese didn't complain. 
Is that what they're saying? That according to the, the documents, yeah. um, I, I must say another thing is that during between 1580 yeah. to 1640, yeah. we are talking about the Union of Crowns. Oh, Iberian okay. Crown Union. So at that time, Portugal was annexed already to Spain. Ah, yes, yes, yes. I remember that. Yeah. But yeah. but anyway, this this theoretically didn't change a lot the the reality yes. because in the Treaty of Tumar, 1581, Philip respected the sphere of dominance, yes. dominion of the yeah. Portuguese in the right. So yeah. practically, the line is still there. The line is still there. So Siam for Portuguese, Philippines for the Spaniards. Yes. No interference. Yes. But this is but something that cross the line. Yeah. <laughs> which which the Portuguese allowed, right? You said yeah, that, that's what they're saying. Right? The sphere of dominion of Portuguese is Siam, Indochina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Franciscan. But, but you said they didn't complain. They didn't complain. When, when 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 the Spanish uh, sent missionaries. missionaries. I mean, I, I couldn't I couldn't generalize that. No, okay, not sorry, of, sorry. I, I mean, sorry. I couldn't generalize uh, that all didn't complain. But according to the, the, source, the sources, sources of the yeah, Franciscan, they, yeah. they say that they were really warm welcome. No, oh, but for yeah. example, when the missionaries went there, of course they were missionaries, that they, they had to convert people. Were they able to, to successfully convert some of the th uh, Siamese? Unfortunately, none of them. Uh, uh, so the Buddhist uh, religion, the hold of it was so strong in Siam. Yeah, so strong, so strong. Wow. I'm, I'm talking about the 16th century, yeah. but the another century must be something different. No, but the, the, the king of Siam practiced like, religious tolerance at the time? Yes, tolerance. Wow. Always, always, always. Yeah, because in Europe, they're killing each other when, when there's a new king and with another religion. They had no problems because, because the king permit the foreign uh, communities all wow. around the uh, extramuros. Uh -huh. I mean, in the extramuros of yes. Ayutthaya city, Ayutthaya we city, have yeah. Malay, Cochin China, Dutch, English yes. communities. Wow. So pretty much what you're saying is that uh, the Spanish missionaries who usually uh, appeal to the senses of the of the pagans, pagan. very, very, very yeah, yeah, bad yeah. word, yeah, but, but they use the word. Okay, yeah, okay, okay let's just use the word pagan, but pagan is a terrible word, no? Yeah. Okay, but for lack of a better term, let's use that, right? Yeah. Uh, usually, Usually, really. the, the Christian missionaries are very appealing towards the pagans because they offer a superior product in a way, right? <laughs> uh, that they, they offer uh, certain things that are not available in the existing political or and religious order. But what they're trying to tell us is that when the, when the missionaries went to Siam, they couldn't offer yes. anything that the that the Siamese people were not already enjoying. That's what they're saying. No, we're not because, but above, above all, I think that apart beyond of the not getting anything, they get anything because their attitudes they yes. seem to be adaptable to the culture because yes. the Franciscan or Augustinian or Manila yeah. they really adapt themselves to the climate, to the language. Oh, they also get trouble. They try to adapt themselves, but at the time, they don't want to adapt themselves because they adapt themselves in order to get into understanding of the local people. And right. then you to convert, them, them, to convert yes. them, but they convert yeah. them and let uh, them be Catholic. Uh, so, so you're saying that they were, that these missionaries from the Philippines were having a hard time integrating themselves in, in Siam in society. society? I think that integrate themselves is not difficult, but to convert people is difficult oh. because there was uh, uh, religious tolerance very in very high yes. degree in the yes. Asia kingdom. So if there was a religious tolerance, yes. I mean, the new religion would have no yes. selling point, right? right? That's true, that's true. You'd have no sell, which is different in the case of Japan where the conversion was, was uh, yes. much more successful because the shogun yeah. was very repressive. Very repressive. And you know, when, you know, it's like in the Philippines, this is our uh, kasabihan. Kung ano ang bawal, yun ang masarap. Yeah. So, well, you know, that's why... In, the, in English, please. We, because yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't understand When well, it is uh, prohibited, it is more delicious. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
You know what Dodong ni Menso told me? Okay. Uh, told It's more before. delicious. No, 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 no. no, no. Okay, okay. If you want to kill an idea, yeah. if you want to kill an idea, allow it. Mm-hmm. So the more that you want to kill an idea, the more that you want to repress an idea, the more that it will live. So, so that is what happened there. That's what happened. <laughs> the story you're telling makes the migration from the, the kept, uh, Japanese Catholic mm-hmm. to form the new Japanese community as well in Utah. Oh. The immigration flux from oh. the repression. Oh, yeah. wow. That's interesting. Actually. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm learning a lot uh, Southeast Asian history. Oh, yeah. and, and I'd like to add that actually at that time, um, the Portuguese went to Siam in the very beginning of 16th century. 15, 10 something, yeah. and by the time the Spanish arrived, mm. there were mosques, three churches of the portico. Of oh, the portico. wow! So there was there was a mosque mm. for for Muslims, yeah. yes. and there were churches for yes. for for Christians. I want to to put this uh, comment already. Ronald Bravo said, if those missionaries were trying, uh, sorry, uh, those missionaries did not bring the sword. The missionaries only brought the carrots. <laughs> Chinese had the better tasting carrots than those brought by the missionaries. Is that is that is, we, we is that uh, correct? Uh, is that correct? Is that is it also about carrots? So is or Bravo is talking of carrots in a more figurative sense? <laughs> <laughs> figurative, figurative, figurative sense. sense. Yeah, carrot and stick. Right? Yeah, carrot yeah, and stick. Yes, but but yes, for right. the for the carrot and stick to work, the alternative to the carrot should be a stick. But yeah. if the carrot is already there. And you're offering another carrot, then yeah. you really pretty much don't have anything yeah, to exactly, offer. Exactly, exactly. No? Now, mm-hmm. uh, there's another. Bernadette Santiago said, "In fairness, Pogi is sir, no, I will have to focus." Ah, so yes. she said, Bernadette Santiago, one of our regular watchers, told us that in she's fairness, having, she's having trouble concentrating because because you are in good fairness, you're oh good looking. Uh, so, Miami, salamat po. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah. You have other questions. Ikaw. Elephants. Yeah. When did the elephants come in? You know, I've heard this story from one of my old colleague in the history department of uh, UP. His name is Ferdinand Gianes. He had a doctorate. Uh, familiar with the no? Yes. Because I, 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 I heard that you know the Siamese wanted to bring elephants. Can you tell us the story of that? Yes, actually, back when in the year of 1584, when King 1584, 1584, uh, yeah. when King Ramon sent that Portuguese captive. Yeah. The first embassy to the Philippines, a couple of elephants were included in the gift to Manila. So two elephants arrived. Ah, the two elephants arrived. Yes, arrived oh, wow! I did yes. not know that some of the elephants arrived. Da. 1584. Uh, the name of the first elephant is Shao Chua. Wow, what's the name of the other one? Bani No, no, no. Uh, so, did, did we know what happened to these elephants? Did they yeah. die? Did they? No, they, didn't, they didn't die, but. According to the more sources, um, on one governor general, they give an elephant to Shokun. Oh, the band. Yes. Uh. Ah, so they gave one of the elephants to the Shogun? Yes, supposedly from these, these two elephants. Wow. What about what? No? Give from... Give from uh, Saiyan and, and then you recycle it. Recycle and give it to somebody else. <laughs> Terrible, yeah, terrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and then we're talk, uh, what I'm actually asking to you is, uh, you know, I would like to know about the uh, Bustamante. It seems interesting to some people this Bustamante Siam relationship. Why? Oh, and yeah. what's the story with what's this? What's the story with this? Um, Shao is talking about the Philippine embassy yeah. in 1718, uh, which was sent in April and end up with the signing of the treaty the Treaty of 1718, which was signed this month. This oh, month was thir- 300 years ago, this month. What, 300 years ago, this, this month? month? That's why it's good that we're doing this talk oh, and oh, this, yes. uh, what? This is 300 years of anniversary, Yeah, just in this month. So this is a special occasion. Do they have a celebration with the Thai Embassy no. about the 300 years of that yes. Thai Embassy? Uh, Thai, yes, Thai yes. Embassy? Yes, Thai Embassy in Madrid, they celebrate the anniversary by providing like Thai masks. Um, um, but here in the Philippines, no celebration. No celebration. <laughs> they should. Wow. No celebration. Yeah, but yeah. but the Bustamante, why they sent the why why, why he sent what the what what was his motive? Because at that time, Philippines lacked rights because yes. of the locals. Right. Disease. So he tried to find which kingdom can provide them the the, uh, the rights, and that what that was Siam. So they sent uh, 
and, and diplomatic expedition to Siam, and the embassy stay around four months. Four, four months, four months in Siam. Day. Four months. And interestingly, there was a crash between the protocol, the Spanish protocol, and Why? the Siamese one. Why? Because you cannot enter in the royal palace in the chamber and the, uh, the throne room with shoes oh. or even with hats. Oh, anything. That's yeah. That's what we expect. That's yeah. why we take our even today in shrines we have yeah, to take so they our hats. Do that. Yeah. Uh, they couldn't do that at that time. But so, they did. But they did negotiate until certain point, and that's why they kept them staying longer. Mm. This is a problem of always since 1598 something. The first mission from here, they complained that we could not do that because we are representatives of the King of Spain. The empire. So the they cannot take kingdom. away their hats, and uh, they cannot take off their shoes. Yes. So the first embassies oh. they enter the royal palace without taking off shoes. Interesting. Interesting. Taking off shoes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And but but they succeeded. Succeeded at negotiating. They didn't have to do this one or taking off shoes or doing this. Ah, uh, kau tawing in, in Chinese. Yeah, kau tawing in Chinese. In Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. Something yeah so like so that. eventually they. They were able to convince. They were able to convince. Yes, and it was successful because at that time Siam's economy was very flourishing because that was that was the time when uh, Siam had a very prosperous harvest trade with China. Even China um, take off leaves if Siam sent um, an exact amount of rice to rice. them. So, so uh, even then, uh, even then, even then, even then, Thailand has always been exporting rice. Yes, uh, exported rice. Wow, well, because there's a this there's, there's a there's a popular misconception here in the Philippines that um, the International Rice Research Institute was oh, yeah. established in the Philippines yes. that the Thais were actually coming yes. in to learn about rice planting uh, to the area. And we used to be the ones who are the fourth in the forefront yes. of, of rice culture. Yes. And then eventually sure. we were left behind and that we're now getting uh, so, uh, sources of rice. W one of the sources is Thailand is now exporting rice. But you're now saying to us that during the time of uh, Bustamante, this was already happening. Yes. Uh, we what, were already this, sending rice was, in the Was this the first time that the Philippines Expo uh, imported rice from from, no, from no, Thailand. No, it's not the first time because we are talking about the early phase of 18th century, but in the 17th century, 60 something, Philippines suffered earthquakes, many oh, things. Wow. Uh, so rice, rice salt eater, gunpowder, ivories, and deer skins. Oh. Those are exported products. Of Exported and then one of the recipients of the Spaniards here in Manila. Yes. So it, it also the, it also demolishes the idea that the Gallo trade, for example, and the trade here in, in Manila during the time of the Spaniards was only between the Spaniards and the Chinese and Philippine products. Yeah, but but but, uh, but the value is Cheaper. No, 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 no. The volume, sorry, sorry. The volume. volume. The volume is obviously lopsided. lopsided. The, volume, the volume for, for Chinese trade, goods you know, is big. Is extremely yeah, large. and, and, and in, even let in the National Museum, oh, no. wait, even in the National Museum, you see Siamese jars of the yes. gallon, gallons that were found. Yes, he's talking about the San Diego galleons. Yes, yes, yes. This was the one, the evidence. But I'm trying to say that even though Siam didn't export, mm -hmm. the his own products because they are wild, like ivory, something like that, to the galleon trace. But my thesis, I'm trying to emphasize that Siam also form a part of the galleon trade. Oh, really? Because oh, wow. uh, even though we don't export our products that much, we pr we export the Chinese uh, products, Japanese products. We are like Interpol, Interpol, mm. Emporium. So we are like middlemen, mm. middlemen to so. You know Chinese so, so what you're country. saying is that the Chinese products that went into the galleon sent to Mexico, Mexico. It is not just yeah. from China itself, it's but China. some Absolutely. part some some of those Chinese products were actually from from, from Siam. Siam and from the other so what you're telling you learned that here. Yeah, you learned that what you're telling us here is that the contact between the Spanish colonial government in Manila from fifteen hundreds to 1767, for example, 
was already constant not just uh, not just uh, every now and then but you know it's really a constant yes. connection constant connection oh wow you should have wrote a very very enlightening uh, he already did he already did that his dissertation yeah yeah Ah, wait. Be- well, of course, this is a technical matter. Is mm-hmm. this dissertation accessible already in yes. the internet? Yes, it is. It's what is the title? Is this the title? No, no. you can't. You just type my name, my surname, yeah. and then yeah. put my university, Autonoma de Madrid. Yeah. But the problem is, it was written in Spanish. Do you, you, and you haven't had an English version um, of this. Actually, I defended my thesis as international one. So I, what I need to do, apart from the... The other one is that I need to do the conclusions in English and both English and Spanish. Ah, yeah, so at least the conclusions we can yes, read. It's about 20 yeah. pages. Yeah, of course, it's not imposing too much on you because this you're, you're, you're really Thai. No, are, you, are you translating this to Thai language? I haven't. I haven't. I didn't have time because I went back yes, to Thailand. Yes. I need to get contract as a lecturer. As a lecturer. And you're, you, you're all already on to pitch. Yeah, yeah but... Yes. <laughs> There are uh, translating softwares out there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah of course. For, at it's least for some basic translation. Yes. Google yes. Translator is very clever. Yeah. <laughs> and very clever, and sometimes they're almost accurate already, right? Yes. Yes. Right, right. Yes. It's, it's so a very good the tool. Actually. So you can access mm. PM's uh, dissertation online. Fortunately, it's in Spanish, but you can use. Uh, Google Translate or some other translating software, no? To, to yeah. yeah. But I think that the conclusion of the 20 pages is, is quite enough. enough. No. Is quite ah, yeah, enough. perfect. The conclusion. Now, um, well, we're going to already to the conclusion. But uh, is that okay, Mr. Bernas? Oh. I, I think I think I think where well, this has been so enlightening to us. Yes. But I, I have a question though. Um, so. What kind of, for example, we talked about diplomacy, religious missions, commerce already. What kind of cultural exchanges oh, did we did we did we have in this period? There is a lot because ah. you know every time we trade with somebody, there is not only economic exchange. Yes. Objects, um, transfer, ideological, intellectual. So that means there is a Manila thing that is now in Thailand just yes. because of what? What is yes, For example, the gifts that. Uh, Bustamante expedition gave to the king of Siam at that time. If we look closely into the inventory, mm. we find many Spanish and Latin American utensils, ah. like the mancerina or the sauces for chocolate, mm-hmm. chocolate, and the like Latin American desserts, ah. like confit ah. of tomatoes, yeah. like bizcochuelos, bis- oh. Spanish gastronomy, and this is the gastronomy, right? But wow. The cultural exchanges, what else? Intellectual one. The Francisca, for example, they went to Siam and they get back. They they wrote accounts. Yes. So ah, the so the, the, the basic information on Thailand that was written by this. Oh, yes. And oh. they by the and they published some of them here. In Manila, send them back Mexico, Mexico to Spain. But the Neira is that the former ombudsman? Riva de Neira. Riva de Neira. Riva de Neira. Yeah, not uh, de Banadera. De Banadera. <laughs> de Banadera. De Banadera. Guajira de Banadera. De Banadera. Sorry. From Cuba. Yeah, yeah. It is from Cuba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the one. So this guy is a smart guy. I, 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 I like him. No, no. But, but, but <laughs> that was one of the the points that Ken emphasized earlier in his talk, no? That yes. and which a lot of Filipinos probably don't know. Yeah. That during this period, no, the early part of the Spanish colonial rule, no, the the Philippines was a sort of intellectual center, yes. right? That's center what they say. Yeah. of well. the, the empire. Yes. You produce many works. Many works. Yeah. Many and it was published wow. in Intramuros here, yes. get back to Mexico and Spain. Yes. Some yeah. copies wow. are found now yeah. in archives. Yeah, and then you, you were able to read these things. Yeah. 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 Oh, so many books. Look. Mabigyan sana ng tubig ang bisita, sabi yung chiri ninyo ko sa gilo. Kanina pa ako naghahanap ng baso, wala akong mahanap. So, sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay, okay. sige. So, yeah, so the final question for me is, so if that was the, 
that was what w went on before. Mm -hmm. uh, what is now the relationship between the present Philippine government, I mean, in a few words, and the Kingdom of Thailand? And, yeah, I think that for Thai people, per, um, informally, we have a good image of Filipinos because oh, there really? are really yes we have a bad image of ourselves I think. <laughs> yeah we have a good image between you know type we also have bias to, towards many some kind of nations but for in the case of Filipinos ah. we have very good image quite good one because Philippine people Filipino people went to Thailand and work mostly in my my parents time as singers so yeah. right now we have many famous singers in Thailand of Filipino origin. Yeah, and I think one of them is so uh, a very handsome guy as well, like you, Mr. Christian Bautista. Oh, this is right? very famous. This is very famous in Thailand. Ah, uh, and Christian, uh, Bautista. Who is that Christian Bautista and Mark. Uh, Mark? Who is that? No. no. Christian Bautista, another one. I forgot Mayas the other Salonga, one. Mayas Salonga. Mayas Salonga. Mayas Salonga. Mayas Salonga. Uh, yes. And we Filipinos are known by speak. You are the nationalist that best speak English. For us, yeah, because you want to also speak English. English. Yeah, that it meant in the people. We are trying well, to speak. Uh, yeah, the, the, you the, know, the, history. Uh, no, that's what the image that we have for your country. I think the image of uh, Thai for a lot of people here in the Philippines was stuck in you know what? <laughs> because a lot of the politicians no, here no, who no, advocate strong no, government, no, no, they no. wanted to say no. that you should uh, see taxi. No, oh, for me it was the Yingle. I wanted yeah. to serve as everybody guide. Oh, you know, ah, is that a pretty girl? Oh, pretty girl. Yeah, she's beautiful. Very pretty. She's beautiful. They have a famous actress. Do we, do we, do you, do we have a famous actress in the Philippines that is famous in your country? Aside from Lea Salonga, the other others like is it Maria Rivera? I don't know. Mm, no. Oh, no, no, no. This is actress. Ah, is that actress? Is the other way around? There's a famous Thai actor, uh, and the Thai actor is famous in ah, the Philippines. Is that Mario Mauer? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Mario Mauer, I thought he was Filipino, actually, was when I saw him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. And you know, someone told me... Uh, Does he know how to speak Thai? He? Yeah. Sure, he was born in Thai. I, I guess he was born in Thai, but he speaks fluently Thai. Very good, yeah. because lots of Filipinos who have foreign, foreign blood, blood, they don't speak Tagalog. Oh. Because they're Indian. Yeah, so. they're Indian. <laughs> I was about to say that. idiots. But in the case of Mario Mauer. My boy, Mario Mauer. My boy, Mario Mauer. Do you know Pac Man in Thailand? Oh, yes, Mani Pacquiao. We know Mani Pacquiao, yes, we know. We know Pacquiao. Wow, man. You've been speaking of Mani Pacquiao. There used to be a time in boxing that Filipinos and Thai boxers were always fighting for. Oh, is that? I forgot the name. Uh, uh, Speaking Bantari? Uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. that's a Thai, Thai no, guy. That's Thai guy. Yeah. It's basically oh. in the lower, uh, in the lower uh, weight. Yeah, when, when Pacquiao was still yeah. very young. 3K battery, I remember that. He was Thai. 3K battery. 3K battery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, the, the Thai boxers are also dominant in the, in the, but I, yeah. but, but, is kickboxing more, more popular now than that is than Muay Thai. Muay Thai, yeah. more, Thai. more famous than Muay Thai boxing, Thai is the the box the boxing that allows yes. you to use every part of yes, your body. Yes. Yeah, yeah, different yeah, yeah, from yeah. the boxing that you can ah, use. Yes. So, so are you saying Thai athletes are are moving away from traditional boxing? Yes, we have. And, and, and going into Muay Thai. No, no, it's not that one. Muay Thai is still Muay Thai. Yeah. But if you want to go to Olympic, there is no Muay Thai. Yeah. You have to get into the, should, the boxing. We should have Olympics for Muay Thai. Well, of course, the other interesting thing for a lot of Filipinos was when 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 the former King Pumipon, yes. Adunya Death, yes. uh, Adunya Death was sick. Yes. And, and, and when he died. And then, of course, when, when Filipinos, for example, Vicente Villan, you know, the Hangawai, he is a professor in the, of history. He went to to to, to 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 Thailand. Yes. No, no. Before this, when the king was still a bit healthy, yes. or you know, when he was health was declining, he felt that when people talk about the late king yes. during that time when he was sick, they were sad, and that yes. they have high respect for the monarch, uh, especially the 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 the, 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 the late king. Yes, the yeah. late king has done many good things to the country because yeah. back then in 16, 17 um, decades. 
Thailand was living in rural area poverty. Right, right. So what he did was creating many projects. We call now royal projects. There yeah, the royal project. Yes. There are hundreds of projects. That wow. Help, that help better the life of like tribes in the northern part, in the southern part. For example, the, the queen as well. Mm. She empowered the women. Queen civic yes. Yes. You know, I, I I was interested because you know he was an agriculturist. He wanted to uh, experiment. Actually, he himself yes. was experimenting yes. on, you know, farm implants, for example, yes. or even, you know, for example, the the production of tilapia. Or oh, yes, tilapia. That is one story. of the things that he proliferated, so that you will have better tilapias for the for the what do you call this for the fish ponds of each Thai uh, people. Yes. Yes. These were projects by the king, and you know, he, yes. he was not just a figurehead, but he also stabilized. You know, remember that what I learned when I was in high school uh, about Thailand was that it changed uh, a lot of uh, it changed the government's constitutions a lot of times because of some up political upheavals, but it's always but the king. The king that provides that provides stability. stability. He stops yes. the. Um, um, the, the Thai nation from shrinking into yes. chaos. Yes. 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 So in a way, yeah, the, the Thai people so we name King Gurdo as father of nation. Yeah. 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 yeah, remember that in in a way, um, in the Philippines, uh, we do not have a a, a symbol like that. Who mm -hmm. because when you know when there's political upheaval, <laughs> it changes <laughs> leaders. You know, he will jump, jump, jump. <laughs> yeah, no, no, so, yeah. So in a way, in a way, but for example, some people would say that you know we do not we do not want to have a, a a king because you know this is a democracy. But you know, for example, with with Britain, for example, Elizabeth II, some of the monarchs were symbols of uh, stability. Okay, it, it's symbol of stability precisely because hmm. a monarch is not replaced until they die or they abdicate, yes. right? Yeah. So. Which can be a good thing or a bad thing because if you have a good king, then you hit the jackpot, it's okay. right? Yeah. But if you have a bad king, then it's going to spell trouble for the country. For me, fortunately for Thailand, the, the king was a good king and he was a good king for many, for many, many, many years. years. For many it's like years. one of the longest years. reigning monarch. And no, even he, he was the longest, longest yeah, reigning, reigning monarch. monarch. And even Elizabeth II, for example, they, the British also hit the jackpot because she was also a very good queen. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, are we okay with that? Yeah. Yes, I, thank I you guess. for having me today. Yeah. Yes. Thank but we, so have, we will read the comments first uh, okay. while, while, while in your presence, okay? Um, which is in Filipino most of the yeah. time. Yeah, but let us uh, yeah. let us read yeah. them. Uh, we if if there's something about yeah. you, we're going okay, to I'm worry. going to translate it for you. Okay, okay. Um, hello, mga sirs, Presi Gavina, uh, Joelan Saluria, yeah, special episode. We're tayo. just mentioning the names yes. of the people. So that we are greeting them. Uh, Sir Shao, salamat po at nakita ko kayo for the first time sa Museo ni Rizal sa Port Santiago. Thank you for all those who came. Even Robin Padilla, one of the one of the most spectacular movie action stars in the country attended my talk my in, in La Liga uh, about the Jose Rizal sa Liga Filipina. Maureen Salamera, Nikki Seralbo, nakachamba daw sa live, finally. Um, uh, Maureen, uh, John Esa Bachao, Sir so, Shao Laban, because I was doing this. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, si Kumparin Putik. Oh, Kumparin Putik. Kumparin Putik. Literally, the, the name means uh, a friend, uh, muddy friend, muddy friend, muddy friend. Compare means mud. Yes. Compare is Kumpare. yeah, is is the godfather of your child. Oh, compare. Oh, yeah, 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 Kuno, but there's Kuno. Oh, Kuno. Which means uh, in supposedly, the Trinity Battery supposedly defeated, defeated him. So, but he is hinting that. Uh, it was a dive. Yeah, it was uh, a dive. He, he cheated. No? Did he? Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's, that was the situation. Oh, but yo, oh. oh, this time. Oh. Let's be good to our guests. <laughs> But that was a long time ago, very long yeah, time ago. I was very young at the time. Me too. Um, Janis Garnado, Nenet Augusto, Angel Esteban Bireye, cute nyo po naman, nakakainte. Uh, yeah, he's, he's saying that, he, who's cute? Me or you? It's this guy, this guy. <laughs> You're cute. Thank you yeah, so Dwayne Segador, um, Jen Besar, Sam Lalangosa, makasisayang ang Dibem Sari Diyan. Riel Enriquez de la Cruz, kulit ni Sir Chua. 
Mm. Uh, I'm assuming this is mm. inside because Henry Paraiso says Wadi. Oh yeah, because to say hello, we say Sawadi. Uh, Asawadi ka Sawadi. Uh, Wadi is an important yeah. one. Anoy. Yay, happy anniversary. Anoy from Don't Skip Manila. Hello po. Thank you very Maganda much. Ang to malamang. Uh, Ang ganda to malamang itong Anoy. <laughs> may, may boyfriend pa rin. Uh, uh, Kurt Galvez, happy anniversary yung Prof po. Ang bilis po ng panahon, isang taon na po pala ako sumusubaybay sa inyo. Mm-hmm. Sana makita ko kayo ng personal pag nagkaroon ako ng libre gawas mula sa trabaho. What is this episode? 47. 47th episode. Malapit ang 47th episode. Rice Faith Pecabo, feel na feel ni Professor Shaw, uh, Anthony Chamiso, Edmond Alcantara, George Natividad, Lois Patrick Lim, Niel Albanyo, Let's Go Anniversary Special, Rice Faith Pecabo, Ah, uh, sige. Yeah, Sally Kate Chila said, mag-invite kayo ng guest na matalino at wafu, mga lodi. Uli. Said, he said, uh, he we said, invite another said, guest. We, we invite another guest yeah. who is smart and good looking, which means that, that you, you are, are smart, smart and good looking. Thank yeah. you so much. JP Abella, Chaffee Lacson, you're, Nel- you're making yes. quite an impression Why? Why? Right, right. viewers. Nelia Fresnosa, Elmer Davaway Nieva, binabati nga pala si J. Mark, happy watching. Um, Ian Zerudo, Shao, Professor Shao and Professor Van, I read from the Pigafetta account of Magellan's expedition that an envoy from Siam told Raja Humabon that the same people, more like the Portuguese, are the one who attack and destroy Malacca. <laughs> Natakot ata, Umabon became uh, scared. That's why he asked uh, Magellan to drop uh, but, Angkor in Cebu. I, I, I don't think it was an envoy, right? Because when Magellan arrived in in Cebu, in Cebu there was, a, there, yeah, there was a, a Siamese ship, Siamese, right? No, there was a Siamese Muslim, Muslim yes, Siamese Muslim merchant, Muslim, merchant there. Yeah. With their own ships? No. Their own ships. They, yeah, they went for yeah, yeah. trading. And, and these were the guys who gave information to yes. to Humabon about that the one, Spanish. Yes, they served as the interpreter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wow. Yes. But they, they, they I, I think, uh, it, I also remember this part. I think the, the, the Siamese people, the Siamese Muslim, uh, mistook Magellan because Magellan was Portuguese, you know. He yeah. took them for for Portuguese mm-hmm. instead of oh, Spanish. Oh, you mean that? Right, right. Oh, yeah. Something is not written in Picafeta's account. Ah, I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Janice okay. Garnado, hello. Okay. Christian Aaron Silva, uh, Trends Go, Kumparin uh, Putin. Mm. Uh-huh. What was, uh, Ronald Bravo has a very good question here. What was our trade relations? with the Siamese people before the Spanish time. Before? Did we have, yeah, like Filipinos, oh. we have a... Uh, Definitely, yes. Uh-huh. yes. We uh-huh. had, like, we have evidence, archaeological evidences of, like, Siamese ceramics in the in shipwreck, the, yes. In the shipwreck, yeah. At least two near Palawan Islands. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Siti Aisa, one of my students, hello. He's a Muslim Filipino. Aaron Diaz, happy anniversary po. Uh, John Dave Baluyot Manoloto, one year of empowering people with history. Salamat po. Wepa! Salamat po. Salamat po. Rosalinda Makadaeg, Santa Maria, watching from New York. Recently, we, we say Wepa, which is just, Filipinos are fond of... Uh, of putting things to get, uh, back. What is putting me? Yes. I don't know how, how this is done, but we usually invert. Oh yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, so power, oh, so power oh, okay. is where pa. We also have this kind of thing. Oh, Lodi know. means idol. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, so idol, that's, Lodi, okay. Oh, yeah. so you say Lodi, L-O-D-I, it's yeah. idol. Well. Okay. So, so you're Lodi. Lodi, Lodi where pa. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, uh, in, 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 recent, in recent months, that has become, you know, yeah. a sort oh. of a, Crazy in the Philippines to say where pa instead of power. power. Eh. Oh, and yeah. you call people lodi. Yeah. And you also say pet malu. Pet yes. malu means malupet, malupet which malupet. Malupet. well literally malupit means uh, wicked. Wicked, yeah, wicked. Yeah, wicked. 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 But in, in the in positive a, way. Oh, like, like, wow, you're like wicked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Compartment Putik said about me joking, haha, shao being shao. Ronald Bravo said, lame dilawan jokes. Rosalinda Makadaeg, Santa Maria, watching from New York. Ron Diaz, 
Cons Dionisio, Christian Eamon Silvia, West Philippine City Territorial Dispute. Hmm. Ang nakita niya doon sa narrative namin. Margie, ano ba yung sabasan? Shoutout naman ako, Bad, Bad Prop. Shoutout, ma'am. Ma why ma have a new name uh, with your followers? No, just her. Uh, Bad Prop daw. Oh, yeah. Margie, that's, that's, that's meme. That's road. Your road. Your road. Sally K. Chilat. What's, okay, yeah. What's with the shoutout lately? Sabi ni Sally K. Chilat. Ano ba yun? Ah, yung nagpagawa ng shoutout? There's a, there's a, a fairly new... Uh, controversy. I really wouldn't call it a controversy, but uh, a, a, a celebrity, <laughs> a minor, very minor celebrity, <laughs> celebrity. In, in the country. And somebody who appeared on television mm -hmm. for a short period of time uh, went on Twitter to ask for graphic designers. And yeah. There are graphic designers out there who can help him design his logo, I think, or something like that. <laughs> but he doesn't want to pay. Oh. He doesn't he want said, to pay for the service. Yeah, he said he's going to pay a shout out. A shout out. It compensate oh. you, compensate, if you do the, if you do the graphic design. And he liked it. And if he likes it, he will okay. give you a shout out, meaning he will just say, hello, shout to uh, and, uh, and that is <laughs> your payment <laughs> for, is, so uh, is everybody kind of zero budget promotion. Yeah. yeah. So everybody now in social media here in the Philippines is ganging up on him. Oh. So lots of jokes and lots yeah. of uh, You know, I tell you something. I did a lot of work for some people. I did not even get a shout out. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah. I, I, for example, made the joke. Yeah. Something like we're looking for historical researches and we will pay 15,000 shout outs <laughs> oh my god <laughs> something like that something like that <laughs> yeah uh, everybody's a joke we will just that's another one eh? um oh my god I, I supposed to say something Carlos Alfredo Chansa ayun nakaabot happy anniversary with the Lota History Live sana po ay tumagal pa kayo katulad ng Itbulaga mabuhay po kayo mga pro Wally Cruz hello Ah, uh, Power Ellis, what new yan lagi guess. Natataklo ba ng kakisigan yung dalawa? Mababawasan chicks ni Professor Shaw. This guy doesn't want us to bring you back because your good looks is <laughs> uh, overpowering both of us. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he said, and he said that my chicks will be decreased. The number of chicks that they have. This guy is a womanizer. Okay. That's, what he's, that. that's what he's saying. He's a womanizer. That's what he's saying. He says that his womanizing will, will, will decline. Uh, will be put decline. in peril yeah. because of your Because person. of your good looks. But it's a good thing that he's going to go back to Thailand next, next week. week. Yes. Uh, and then when we come so back, say, we will talk about other things again. And, and we will no longer invite him. Yeah, because <laughs> this is what because we get. Yes. People are beginning to forget our names and yes, they just, and they're oh. like, yeah. Remember, Doctor PM Sat Hong Jam Rasik. Yeah. Um, please, if if you want the spelling, just look at our post, mm -hmm. okay? Um, Angie Cavalio, guapo pa rin naman sila sa paningin ko. They're still a handsome both of us in my uh, uh, opinion. But there's just one person. Yeah. Though there have been at least ten persons already saying how yeah. handsome. Yeah. Another. Uh, better that something again reiterated. Ganda ng topic. Daming bagong informasyon. Uulitin ko ulit. Nakakawala talaga ng concentration si Sir. Ha ha ha. Maraming salamat dulo tayo sa bagong dagdag na kalaman sa kasaysay. He, she repeated that yeah. she lost concentration. <laughs> Because so, yeah. of your good looks. Yes. <laughs> She so, was, you know, this was a terrible idea inviting you. <laughs> it was a terrible idea. <laughs> I was joking. I was joking. I was joking. <laughs> Chino hindi niyo Gonzaga Ginlo. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, and Sally Chila and all of that. Wait, mga pahabol? May mga pahabol ba tayo ng mga comments? Uh, ayan, kung pa rin putik, Lucid Express, hangin ng panggawa. <laughs> okay, thank you. Tiopi Lugarin, hello. And uh, before that, I would like to say thank you to Mr. Mauro Gia Samonte for giving, sending me a free book on the present former president of Sepi Lovell. Salamat po. And I would like, so, would like to also thank the US Peace Corps in the Philippines for inviting me to talk uh, two days ago in Cavite. Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, announcements? Lana? 
Yeah, uh, there's a, oh, there's a PHA uh, conference. conference so there's a call for papers until. Please make an abstract already. <laughs> Why? Why deny? It should be you. No, because you're 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 the one who chose the topic of Duterte. <laughs> Duterte. No. Anyway, let's talk about that yeah. Duterte. Oh. You, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you want to you, please uh, final words. Final words for tonight. Uh? For tonight. Uh, for tonight. Final words. Thank you so much for staying with me and Shao and Vance tonight. Yes. And I wish you a pleasant night. Good night. That, that. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so, uh, mga amin salamat sa pagsama niyo sa amin sa paglalakbay na ito ng isang taon. And for making this night and the whole, actually, the whole year special for the both of us. no? And uh, hopefully, makasama pa namin kayo sa panibagong taon ulit. No? Basta uh, palolobi ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Ako po si Xiao Chuan, nagsasabing, ang kasaysayan ay hindi basta-basta kwento. It's not just mere story. There is method to it. Magtanong, mag-investiga, at magkumpara. Ako naman po, ang paborito nyo yung Delotard historian, Vanny Bernas, at papasalamat din sa isang taon, one year. One year. One year of Delotard history. Almost 50 eps. Yes. Oh yes, may I have last word? Yes. Happy anniversary. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And I'd, I'd also like to thank uh, our guest, no? Yes. Him for 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 uh, spending time, no? <laughs> spending time with <laughs> us. My pleasure. And uh, and going through, I mean, staying there, being very nice and calm while Shao Chua gives his terrible jokes, right? <coughs> and providing me with an opportunity to have a new partner for uh, the Lothar this we can get rid of Shao Chu uh, and this can be uh, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> 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 because this guy is more handsome and more handsome. Uh, a lot of people are saying so, that no? so, and more witty you know, yes this is the, uh, the, this is the uh, show the there are many kinds of handsome guests <laughs> <of handsomeness. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> now I'm just joking yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ako po ang inyo maburitong delotar di Zion, Vanny Vieras, kinukote ang batalang Zeus Salazar. No? Ang kasaysayan ay isang salaysay na may saysay. Pero para sa amin dito sa Delotar History Live, lagyan ng saya ang saysay! Maligayang isang taon! Salamat po! We're back!